You know that woman of yours got the look of a woman ain't had a real ride in her life. She's gotta make do with some piss poor stinking farmhand. Hey, hey, tell her I'll let her in my sheets. As long as she bathes first in sheet dip, get the stink of you off of her, farmhand! Not too long ago, I put out a video on why John is more brutal than Arthur. And if there's anything we can learn from that video, it's no one can agree on anything, which is great. I think both Arthur and John are written in a way that is kind of debatable as to who is more brutal or relentless between the two of them. And that's because it's ultimately tied to our own interpretation of their actions and why they do what they do. How they impact others or the position that they're in that compels them to conduct questionable acts of brutality. And that is based off our own individual morals and values. One thing I will say though is this, while it is true we do control the character of both Arthur and John, what we are allowed to do when we control them is still technically within the realm of something they would reasonably do. An example of what I mean here is, it's not out of their character to say hello to anyone and then casually go about their day. Just as it's not completely out of their character to randomly decide to hogtie someone, empty their pockets and put a bullet in the back of their head. They're both capable of doing some horrible things. If they weren't, either we wouldn't be allowed to do these things or there would be some type of system in place that would actually punish us for acting in a way that's not consistent with John and Arthur and how they're meant to be presented. I think the whole desynchronization in the Assassin's Creed series or downright being unable to kill civilians in LA Noir or even drive over a crime scene as you're greeted with an immediate game over screen are good representations of what I mean. I say that because I don't want to see another, you know, you control the buttons you press comment. Yes, I know. But if they weren't willing or capable of doing it, I wouldn't even be allowed to perform that action to begin with, and that's my point. Anyways, as requested by many of you, here's the alternative as to why John is more brutal than Arthur. This time, we're presenting a case of why Arthur is more brutal than John. You're my favorite parasite. No, Ringworm's my favorite parasite. You're my second favorite parasite. Very funny. One of the things I love when it comes to Arthur is just his mentality and how he says certain things. I know we're meant to take a look at his actions and use those as indications of his brutality and ruthlessness, but a factor that I think is often overlooked when it comes to Arthur is his own personality and sense of humor. Even how he speaks to other gang members. During Coulter, he isn't particularly receptive to going out looking for John, who's been missing for two days. And he finds it appropriate to refer to John as not being that smart, and even if that's the case, that shouldn't be a reason as to why they should all fear the worst of his disappearance, and he should be just fine. It's little John. He's got himself caught into a scrape again. He ain't been seen in two... two days. Your John will be fine. I mean... He may be as dumb as rocks and as dull as rusted iron, but that ain't changing because he got caught in some snowstorm. Or my personal favorite from Coulter is his interactions with Pearson and Uncle. The way he casually says even though the gang is low on food, worst case scenario, they can always eat Pearson since he's the fattest. We'll survive. We always have. And if needs be, we can eat you. You're the fattest. Or referring to Uncle as the camp rat and how he tries his best to just avoid him. What a surprise to find a camp rat loitering around in the kitchen. Is that any way to greet an old friend? I feel like we haven't spoken for days. I do my utmost to avoid you. Why, he loves me really. It's his sad way of showing affection. No, it isn't. It's funny to us, but it gives insight to Arthur being pretty blunt. I'm sure there's some truth to the things he says in terms of how he views them. When it comes to Uncle and John, who probably get spoken down to the most, it's worth mentioning too that there's still some level of endearment. Obviously there's a history and certain amount of respect that he has or doesn't have in comparison to the likes of someone such as Charles, who's not only newer to the gang but appears to be much more respected by Arthur, but Arthur still speaks to the both of them in a manner that I would say is not entirely differently than how he speaks to someone like Kieran. Arthur seems to find a little bit of joy in the unfortunate position Kieran finds himself in. The first time he captures him, there's a little bit of mockery to Arthur's tone. I ain't gonna lie to you. This is a real bad day for you, Kieran Duffy. Where are you taking me? Somewhere you ain't gonna like. Why? What are you gonna do to me? Some fan you ain't gonna like. So I'd advise you to save your breath for screaming. No, please! It's not as annoying or rage-inducing as Micah's way of mocking or finding joy in the misfortunes of others, but it's still there. Does that make Arthur any more or less brutal? In my opinion, 
No. I think it makes him a little more flexible and going one way or the other. And it definitely contributes to him as coming off as a possible one-dimensional rough outlaw that's quickly proven to not be the case as the game progresses. And more of Arthur's personality is shared with this. But what about his actions? Well, considering we get almost two completely different Arthur Morgans from start to finish, I'm going to be focusing on Arthur from Culture to Clement's point. Mainly because I don't want to spoil the end for those that have not played the entirety of Red Dead Redemption 2. Apparently, there's still a good chunk of people who haven't, and they do watch the channel, so I'm gonna keep that for another video. So keep an eye out on that. We'll go more in depth in Arthur's character and his actions and redemption, but for this video, Arthur's most messed up things are at the start of the game. Sell your place. We already owe more than it's worth. <coughs> then sell your wife or your family or something. We ain't your idea of <gasps> charity. Is that clear? And it's only fitting to begin with what is the most glaring instance of brutality by Arthur. And that is everything tied to the money lending missions with the worst case of them all being that of the Downs family's overall situation. Now I've covered this in depth in multiple videos already, but what I always glossed over was Arthur's lack of reluctance to suggest to Thomas to sell his wife to pay the gang back. Sell your place. We already owe more than it's worth. <coughs> then sell your wife. It's one thing to point out Thomas is sick and very clearly on his way out soon. To disregard that and then decide to beat him or at least just shout in his face as he does is one thing. But to then tell him to give his wife up for a little bit of cash is a whole other level of fucked up. Another element that is not really considered is the time period. We even see during Clement's point that women aren't allowed to vote. They don't have the freedom allotted to them now. And with Edith being married to her husband, in some ways, she is his property. That is how women were seen at the time. So her getting into that line of work later on could very well have been at the urging of Thomas before he passed away. It's up to speculation, of course, and we don't know that for sure. But you can't deny Arthur saying that isn't ethically or morally sound. And then if we take into account him, again, my version, beating and robbing Robo, who doesn't even speak English, then goes on to take Chick Matthews, hogtie him, bring him to the tree he hid the money in so he can witness his stash being taken, then thrown into a bush and stabbed to death. Again, not out of character, but all jokes aside, the money lending missions are the perfect example of Arthur doing the worst out of whatever the gang needs. There's no emotions tied to it. He's very pragmatic and matter of fact. This is what I want, this is what I need. Do whatever you need, or I'm gonna do whatever I need to get it. You got some money for me, boy? I seen your name in our ledger. Just based off the comment section from older videos, when it comes to the money lending missions, it's debatable as to whose fault it really is. Some people blame it on Strauss, but Arthur's still willing to do it. Even then, you can't put the train robbery during pouring forth the oil on Strauss. You see, during this mission, this was John's job. He set up everything ultimately. It was his plan to rob the train. During the mission, Arthur goes down the aisle accepting donations from all the passengers on the train. Sure. John, Charles, and Sean are equally a part of it, and with it being John's job, you can say this is just another thing to add to John's rap sheet. However, the only person to go down the aisle and physically hit the civilians is Arthur. And I don't think you can bypass this prompt to strike someone with your rifle. I think this is required for you to do. So similar to how Arthur acts in cutscenes, this is another instance where the developers intentionally try to get you to understand just how callous Arthur can be. How much of a threat and how terrifying he can be to come across. Money, oh. Don't do this. Quick, come on! With the debtors, he's also incredibly aggressive towards people that technically did it to themselves. They wronged the gang and Arthur's the hell that they have to pay. With the civilians here on the train, they haven't done anything wrong. Sure, they might be a little reluctant to empty their pockets, but to just immediately be responded with a rifle butt to the face is crazy to think. Or how about sending women and children off to potentially die? This is during the mission A Strange Kindness, which I love this mission because you get more insight of the relationship and dynamic between Charles and Arthur, but it's during this mission where the gang have to up and leave from Horseshoe Overlook. Dutch, John, Arthur, shot up the town of Valentine. The area has become too hot, they'll have to get up and move. And it's Charles and Arthur that have been tasked with finding a new location to relocate to. So they'll go out and head to a location known as Dewberry Creek. They find a dead body, and nearby there's a camp that's been ransacked, everything has been flipped over, and it looks like the people that were living there have just up and left. That's not the case, however, as there's still some survivors hanging by. There's a woman and two small children hiding underneath a wagon. Their father has been taken by a group of bandits, held for ransom. 
Now go on, get out of here. Go, we need the land, go. Get the hell out of here. They took our father. Who did? Men, last night. Where? Where did they take him? It ain't no business of ours. I don't even speak their language. So here you have three vulnerable and scared people. A woman and her two children that are not only in a foreign land where they cannot speak the mother tongue of the country, but are possibly already targeted by local bandits, who have already taken the initiative by kidnapping their father. I mean, the entire situation would have been very bad for all of them if Charles hadn't stepped in. In the cutscene, Arthur coldly says he doesn't speak their language, which adds Sim just callously dismissing them for an irrelevant reason. But then he quickly rectifies it by excusing himself with the bare truth. They are wanted with the law on their backs. They don't have time to be saving people when they can't even save themselves. What's going on with you? What do you mean? You were just gonna send that woman and her children on their way? We're wanted, man. We got Pinkertons braiding down our necks. We should be moving camp, not running off on some wild goose chase. Come on, Arthur. That's not how you are. Well, maybe you don't know me as well as you think you do. Whether if that was the genuine thought in the back of his head the whole time, or if he came up with it to save face a minute later, is up for interpretation. Personally, I like to think it was to save face and he was just gonna let them go. Which sounds even more messed up, but thinking about it that way makes Arthur's transformation at the end of the game that much more dramatic. Which is why I like to look at it that way. It's a complete 180. But if we were to compare it directly to John here, John would have definitely sympathized a lot more with that small family's plight. Especially towards the end of the game and how John is in the first game towards Abigail and Jack. They're both his priorities. He will do any and everything to protect them. And with him being a family man, if something was to happen to him or his wife and son was left in some type of vulnerable position, I'm sure he would want someone to look out for them and try to save them in some way if they could. And not just send them on their way how Arthur did. I think John would have shown more sympathy with the family and much more aggression towards the father's kidnappers if it was him in the position and not Arthur. Arthur's a little bit more nonchalant about it, or less emotionally invested, I should say. Arthur at the beginning of the game is the epitome of not thinking and doing whatever he's told, and then just trying to achieve it as efficiently as he possibly can, and by that it just means as cold, aggressive, emotionally detached as he possibly can. When it comes to Arthur being so cold-blooded, everyone cites the Downs family, and that's true. I think that's a good example, but for me it was always this one right here, it's a different element to it. With Thomas Downs, he was a debtor. He did it to himself, ultimately. And Arthur doesn't like that line of work, which could be him projecting a little more into why he's so aggressive towards Thomas. But at least in this case, it's just people that are completely vulnerable. And then Arthur basically says, hey, I know this is your hiding spot, but uh, we need the hiding spot. So good luck finding somewhere else to hide. And I'm sorry about the whole bandit situation, but that's not really our problem. But let me know what you think. What is your favorite, or I should say most memorable, brutal moments from Arthur? Is there anything I miss? Is there a greater example that comes to mind? Let me know down in the comments section below. And like usual, when it comes to videos, well, in general, not even just like this, I'm always taking suggestions, recommendations, and the like, so feel free to comment. You know, I say it all the time, this is more of a community channel rather than just my channel specifically, so let's talk down below. Like always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all later.